Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about rates and work rates. Uh, so we have a few examples for rates and work rates here. I have six examples. And once we talk about that, then we're going to talk about the rational numbers and the number line. Now this comes about because we're going to be working with a lot of fractions through these rates and work rate problems. So to begin, uh, what is a rate? Now, rates are basically speed. Rate is defined to be distance divided by time. Okay, so it's the amount of distance you can cover in a certain amount of time. You may see it abbreviated as R is equal to D over T. Okay, we're going to be working with this a lot so it's good to memorize this formula here r is equal to d over t if you have trouble memorizing where the r the d and the t go think about your speed um, while driving if you drive a car you have the speed of the car measured in miles per hour right so speed of your car would be miles per hour okay so speed here, this is synonymous with the term rate. And miles per hour, well, we have miles. And the term per here could be translated to be division. So this is miles per hour. Okay. And miles is, of course, a distance. And hours here is, of course, a time. So the speed of your car, the rate of your, that your car is traveling, is also measured in, as a distance over time. So let's use this for example one. All right, so we have the Ramsey family drove from Hartford, Connecticut to Washington, D.C., which is a distance of 342 miles in six hours. So what was their average rate of speed? Now the term rate, in the formula here, rate is distance over time. Really, the rate here is actually an average rate because this isn't measuring your speed at a specific moment in time. It's really just the average speed from one place to another place. Okay, so it's important to keep in mind this is an average rate. So in these word problems here, if you see the term average, just know that, well, this is the formula for the average rate. Okay, so if you wanted to know the rate at a specific moment in time, we would need um, a lot more information. Okay, so the average rate is the distance over the time. Now in this particular example, we have somebody here let's say they're starting and oops, let me go over here okay so here's Hartford Connecticut now they're driving to Washington DC well, I don't know let's say it's it's over here it's abbreviated DC okay so they're traveling from here to here we know that this distance covered is 342 miles. We know the time it took. We know it takes six hours. So now to find their average rate from Hartford to DC, we just need to apply this formula. Well, the average rate, R, is going to be the distance, which is 342. And it's a good idea to keep the, my, uh, the units on here. Okay, the units are going to be very important. So 342 divided by, and our time is 6 hours. Okay, so uh, to do a calculation like this, you know, of course you're going to have a calculator handy to do this. So 342 divided by 6 in the calculators, we get 57. And now what are the units here? Well, the units are going to be miles per hour or you could say miles over hours if you'd like 
Okay, so 57 miles per hour is their average rate of speed. Now, this was a fairly simplistic example. It didn't necessarily need a picture. However, when we get into the more complex examples, it may be helpful to draw some pictures. So uh, it's good to get in the habit of doing this early on. Okay, let's move on to example number two. Sam travels 48 miles in two thirds hours. Find Sam's speed in miles per hour and in miles per minute. So again, we're going to apply the formula rate. Oops, uh, where are we? Okay, so rate is equal to distance over time. And whenever I use a formula, uh, I like to write out the formula before I start doing the work. So this is going to help you remember the formula as well if you keep writing it out. So rate is distance over time. Okay. So we have two questions here. First, find Sam's speed in miles per hour. Okay, so we want miles per hour and in miles per minute. Okay, so we want both of these. Now, first of all, miles per hour. The units here are given in miles and the units here are given in hours. Okay, so if we want to find the average, uh, find his speed, in miles per hour, we could go ahead and use 48 miles and two-thirds hours. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know his speed, or let's call it rate R, is going to be 48 miles. And then we're going to divide this by the time, which in this case is two-thirds hours. Okay, so here we have a situation where we are dividing by a fraction, right? Okay, so 48 divided by 2 thirds. This can be done in the calculator if you would like. However, you should recall how to divide by a fraction here. Okay, so 48 divided by 2 thirds. If we do this, we'll obtain our answer. But now how do we do this? Well, 48, remember that dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So 48 divided by 2 thirds is the same thing as 48 times the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. Okay. Now if I wanted to, I could put this 48 over 1 because anything divided by one is still itself. Okay, you, do, you don't need this step, but I'll just put it in there. And I also dropped the units at this point. I do know the units are in the end is gonna be miles per hour, so I just dropped them here just to uh, have less writing. So now 48 divided by three is 144, okay. If you, you could do that in a calculator, or you could do 3 times 40 would be 120, and 3 times 8 is 24, so when you add those together, you get 144. That's if you wanted to do it in your head. And then 1 times 2 is 2. And we, we now reduce this fraction, 144 over 2, and what do we get? 72. Okay, and the units, now it's very important to add the units back on at the end in your answer if you drop them halfway through like I did. You want to make sure you put them back on. So we know this is going to be miles per hour. So this is miles per hour. It doesn't matter how you write it. You could write it miles divided by hours or you could spell out per miles per hour. So that doesn't matter. Okay, so that's his speed or his rate in miles per hour. Now we need to find out his speed in miles per minute. Okay. So again, we're using this formula. Rate is distance over time, but we want the units to be in miles per minute. So this time here, we want it to be in minutes. So how do we do that? Well, two thirds hours, right? Two thirds hours. Now we may know that two thirds of an hour 
is 40 minutes. You may just know from intuition or, you know, you've been working with time, obviously, your whole life. So two thirds of an hour is 40 minutes. But if we wanted to do this mathematically, how do we do this? Well, if we have two thirds hours and we multiply this by how many minutes there are in an hour, so you know that there's 60 minutes per hour, you could say one hour, 60 minutes per one hour. What happens here is the units here, the hours in this hour cancel and we have two thirds times 60 over one. So two times 60 minutes will give us 100, uh, 120 minutes and three times one on the bottom will give us three. So 120 over three is 40 and the units that are left is minutes. Okay, so that's another way to uh, convert hours into minutes. Whenever you're doing a conversion problem like that, it's, it's not too common uh, in this particular class here, but uh, hours, you would want hours to cancel out because you're trying to convert that into something else. So you would need to have this conversion ratio 60 minutes over hours. You would know that hours needs to be in the denominator here because hours is in the numerator here. That would need to be canceled. Okay. So either way you do it, or you could, you could know that two thirds is point approximately 0 0.6667. And you could multiply that by 60 minutes. And again, you would obtain 40 minutes. So there's lots of ways to get there. So now that we know the new time is 40 minutes, we could say, okay, so our rate R is going to be the distance 48 divided by 40. And we may want to keep the units on here. This is 48 miles. This is 40 minutes. So now 48 divided by 40, well, you know, eight is going to go into both of these. So it's going to reduce to six over five. So six fifths miles per minute. Okay, we could convert that into a decimal if you'd like. So we could do six divided by five and we get 1.2 miles per minute. Okay, which is a reasonable thing. If you're traveling in a car, you could certainly go 1.2 miles in a minute. Okay, that's another thing to keep in mind when you're doing these problems. Uh, if, if you come across these answers that don't seem to make any sense, like if you travel 6,000 miles in a minute, you know, that, that's pretty suspicious. So you could go back and, you know, check, does it make sense in the context of the problem that's actually given? So moving on from example two, let's go to example number three. So at a rate of 60 miles per hour, how far will you travel in one, two, and three hours? And then what is the formula for distance? Okay, so let's see, since we're working with rates, I know I'm gonna have to use the formula R is equal to D over T. By the way, I write T's like this because if you write a T like this, it may be confused for a plus sign. So mathematicians tend to put little curves on the bottom of their T's. Okay, so we have R is equal to D over T. And at a rate of 60 miles per hour, how far will you travel in one, two, and three hours? Well, let's see, if we try to use this formula here, we're actually given the rate we are given 60 miles per hour for the rate. And we are given a time. Right? We don't know D, right? We know the time is three. So at this point, we didn't discuss how to solve equations yet. 
you may know how to solve equations. That's perfectly fine. If you do, you can solve for d here. But if you don't know how to solve equations at this point, just use your intuition at this point. So if we have a rate of 60 miles per hour, so we're in a car going 60 miles per hour, and you travel for one hour, so in one hour, you know you're going 60 miles per hour, so in one hour you would go 60 miles, right? That makes sense. Well, what if you were traveling at 60 miles an hour for two hours, how far would you travel? Well, you would travel 120 miles, right? Two times 60 miles equals 120 miles, all right? And in three hours, okay, let's say you're going 60 miles per hour for three hours. Well, you'd go every mile you're going six every hour you're going 60 miles so you have three hours times 60 miles per hour we're going to get 180 miles so now how did we get these answers here it asks what is the formula for the distance well it looks like the distance would be our rate right 60 miles per hour times our time right and let's just make sure that this comes out to miles here like why are we getting miles here all of a sudden well distance the rate we had was measured in miles per hour and the time we had was measured in hours right so it turns out that the hours cancel each other out you have one in the numerator sitting up top and you have one in the denominator, so they're going to cancel. Okay, now things don't always cancel as easily as they make it seem right there, but in this case it does. So the units that are left on the distance is simply miles. Okay, so in that way, even if we don't know how to solve equations yet, we could kind of use our intuition to figure out a formula for the distance here. And if you do the equation solving, you would end up multiplying by t in this equation on both sides. So moving on from rate now, we have a topic called work rate. So what is work rate? Work rate is a similar concept to rate. Okay, and uh, so we have work rate, and this is going to be equal to the amount of work done over the amount of time it takes to do that work. Okay, Abbrevi if, uh, if we abbreviate these letters here, we're gonna have, I call it work rate WR, and this is equal to W over T. So very similar to rate, right? Rate is distance over time. Work rate is the amount of work over time. Now this work here, if you had uh, any physics before, you know that the term work means uh, the force times distance. This is a different meaning in, in this scenario here. Okay, So it's not to be confused with force times distance. Okay, So let's take a look at the type of problems we're going to see uh, for work rate. And by the way, the, uh, the units on work rate can be very peculiar at times. So let's take a look at this case, example number four. Joseph can pick 250 apples in two hours. So what is Joseph's work rate in apples per hour? So you see what I mean by peculiar units? We have these units here that would be apples per hour. That's kind of weird, right? So we know the formula. Work rate is going to be the amount of work done over the amount of time it takes to do it. We just need to figure out what is the work and how much time does it take. Well, in this particular situation, uh, we want to find the work rate, so we don't know that. Now, what work is he doing? Well, he's picking 250 apples, so that is going to be the work. So 250 apples, and this is being divided by time. 
How long does it take him to do that? Well, it takes him two hours. Okay, so 250 apples divided by two hours. Well, you do 250 divided by two, which is 125. And then our units that are left, we're gonna have apples per hour. Okay, so 125 apples per hour. Okay, so the units can be all sorts of things in these work rate problems. Okay, it really just depends on the situation. So example five, we have that Rachel can paint two houses in eight days. So what is Rachel's work rate in houses per day? Okay, so again, we are gonna apply the formula WR or work rate is work over time. Okay, so we want another work rate. So what is the work in this case? Well, Rachel can paint two houses. So that sounds like work, right? So we're gonna have two houses for the work. And this is being divided by the amount of time it takes. Well, it takes eight days, right? So eight days is the time. Now two divided by eight, that reduces to one fourth or 0.25. Okay, so 0.25. And the units here are houses per day. Okay, so that is number five. Moving on to number six. If Randy can repair one bicycle in three hours and Bob can repair two bicycles in five hours, what is their combined work rate in bicycles per hour? So often in these word problems, we have some people working together and we wanna know how fast they can do uh, a particular job if they do work together. So this term here, combined work rate, that, pro that means what, it, what you think it probably means. It means you find the work rate of Randy and you find the work rate of Bob and you add them up. Okay, so in this case we're gonna be, most likely we're gonna be adding some fractions together. So first of all, let's find the work rate. Uh, again, we know work rate is work over time. Okay, I always like to write the formula. So work rate. Now, to differentiate the work rate of Randy from Bob, you could do a subscript here. You could do subscript R that will denote Randy's work rate so we don't confuse it with Bob's. So the work rate of Randy is gonna be one bicycle, and he could repair one bicycle in three hours. Okay, so his work rate is gonna be one third bicycles per hour. Now the work rate of Bob, let's do WR subscript B for Bob's work rate. He could do two bicycles in five hours. Okay, so it seems like he could work a little bit faster than Randy. Okay, so two fifths is a little bit more than one third. So two fifths is already reduced as much as it can be and the units on here are gonna be bicycles per hour. Okay, so now the question is asking for their combined work rate. So one third plus two fifths is gonna be the combined work rate. So we're gonna do WR and we're gonna do subscript C. That's gonna be, that's gonna mean their combined work rate. So this will be one third and at this point, I'll just leave the units off. I know the units are gonna be bicycles per hour in the end. So one third plus two fifths. Okay, so we have to remember how to do this here. So let me write this a bit bigger over here. We have one third plus two fifths. So recall to add these fractions together, we wanna to find a common denominator to begin now, so we have to find a number that both three and five will divide evenly into. And 15 seems like a good choice. Three goes into 15 and five goes into 15. 
So 15 is going to be our common denominator. So this means that we want to somehow make this number a 15, right? So to do that, you'd have to multiply this by 5, right? Now, we don't want to do that without balancing this fraction here. So we also need to balance this by multiplying the numerator by 5 as well. Okay, this is going to keep the ratio the same. Essentially, 5 over 15 is the same as 1 third, right? Now over here, I want this denominator to be 15. I would need to multiply this by a 3 to get there. And to balance this fraction, I would need to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. Okay, so we do that up top. So now, we have that this is going to be 5 over 15 plus this will be 6 over 15 and this is equal to 11 over 15. So the combined work rate, 1 third plus 2 fifths, is going to be 11 bicycles for every 15 hours. Okay, you could turn this into a decimal if you'd like, but essentially if 15 hours pass and they're working together, they'll be able to repair 11 bicycles. Okay, so that's combined work rate. That will be coming up uh, in a few later sections, so keep this idea in mind. Okay, moving on. Uh, we want to talk a bit about rational numbers and the number line. Since we're working with these rates and these work rates, we've seen quite a few fractions come into play, so it's good to know where some of these fractions may fall on a number line. Uh, so to begin, let's uh, have a number line. Okay, we may want to put zero you know, towards here. Now first of all, let's talk about the integers. Okay, so the integers are going to be 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so forth. So it's including all the positive numbers, all the negative, no well, not it's all the positive whole numbers, I suppose, but all of these numbers here, and you just repeat the pattern 4, negative 4, 5, negative 5, these are all the integers. You know, I could mark them off on a number line. Uh, one, two, three. Let's mark those off. One, two, and three. And negative one, negative two, negative three, and so forth, right? This is an infinite list of numbers. Okay, you could go on forever listing all these integers. Okay, uh, yeah, here's, let me just put a four here. Okay, so we have all these. Uh, these are going to be the integers. So if I ever say the word integers, I'm specifically referring to these numbers here. Now you may ask yourself, okay, what numbers are falling in between something like 0 and 1? And, you know, we all know a few of these, right? Uh, let me first introduce that concept here. So the next type of number we're going to talk about is uh, rational numbers. Right, and the term ratio is, hitting in, is hidden in the term rational, right? So if you think about a ratio comparing one thing to another, that's essentially a fraction, right? So all these fractions are going to be these rational numbers. So a rational number is defined to be, it's going to be A over B, where A Okay, where a and b are integers. Okay, so there's the word. That's why we need to know that word. So where a and b are integers. And b, there's a restriction on b, right? b cannot be equal to 0. a could be equal to 0. That's perfectly fine. 0 divided by any particular number besides 0 would be 0, but... Uh, zero in the numerator is fine for a rational number. Okay, so these rational numbers are a over b, where a and b are integers, and b does not equal zero. So if we take our number line here, and let me zoom in here. Let me say this is zero, 
and let me say this is 1 over here. Some rational numbers may include uh, 1 half, right? That's halfway in between 0 and 1. And 3 over 4, that's 75% of the way, or halfway between 1 half and 1. Uh, you may have 1 fourth sitting here. A little bit past 1 fourth is 1 third. Okay, that's 0.3333. Okay, uh, a little bit uh, between, uh, uh, a little bit past three fourths, you would find five over six. Okay, halfway between zero and one fourth, you may find one eighth. So all of these are integers over other integers. And you could have negatives too. I'm just working with between zero and one for now. You know, for example, negative one over two is perfectly fine. That's a rational number. Uh, negative 3 over 8, whatever you'd like. And the top could be bigger than the bottom. You could say uh, 21 over, let's say, 6. Okay, that one you could reduce, but you know, you could have all these combinations. As long as it's an integer over an integer where the denominator is not 0, you have yourself a rational number. Now, you could fill this in forever. There's going to be an infinite number of rational numbers between 0 and 1. Okay, you could just keep on coming up with all these rational numbers and it's never going to stop. There's an infinite number between 0 and 1. In fact, between any two integers, there's going to be an infinite number of these rational numbers. So it fills in the number line pretty nicely, although there's still going to be a few gaps even if you fill in all the rational numbers. And I'll be talking about these gaps in a later video. These gaps would be filled in by the irrational numbers. And that would fill in all the gaps. And if you're curious, you know, some irrational numbers are pi, you know, radical 2, uh, radical 3, radical 5. I'm sorry, they would be the square roots, not necessarily just radicals. Okay, so you want to gain a good number sense of where these fractions may fall on a number line. So to do that, we could look, take a look at a table here. We have a table of fraction decimal percent equivalents. Okay, so this is one more thing you want to know for this particular topic. You may want to start to understand, you know, approximately this fraction is going to be point. Well, actually, one eighth is exactly point one two five. Okay, there's some approximations over here, but there's this whole table of values. These are fourths and eighths. We have 1 eighth is 0.125, 1 fourth is 0.25. You may memorize some of these, but, uh, you know, a lot of them, you know, like 7 eighths, I don't remember the decimal equivalent. I would just put this into my calculator to get 0.875, okay? And then right next to the decimal equivalent, we have the percentage equivalent. Okay, so you're going to want to remember how to turn a decimal into a percent and a percent back to a decimal. So to take a decimal and to turn it into a percent, we just move this decimal point to the right two spaces and then we add a percent sign. Okay, or to move to make a percentage back into a decimal, we would take this decimal point and move it back two spaces and take away the percentage sign and then we'd be back into decimal form. Okay, so there's a very big difference between having a decimal and having a percentage. Uh, I know I often see mistakes in you know common literature that just will include a decimal point and a percentage sign when they only mean to have a percentage sign. Okay, it makes a big difference in the world of mathematics, so you want to be careful of that mistake. Okay. Now, of course, the percentage could have a decimal, but you have to make sure that you know that's the percentage that you are actually talking about. Okay, and we have a whole list here, so take a minute to look at the list here. And just try to, all these fractions that are listed in this table, these are fractions between 0 and 1. Of course, there's a whole world of rational numbers outside of uh, between 0 and 1, so you know, be aware of those as well, of course. And that'll do it for this video, so I will see you in the next one.